Hey guys and welcome back to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we're going to show you a very easy way to format your text to create a table of contents in Adobe InDesign. Now there are many different ways to do this and this is a very simple and quick way that we find useful and it doesn't just have to apply to a table of contents, it could be things like forms as well. So let's head onto the computer now and we'll show you how to do this. Okay, so we're here in Adobe InDesign and like most of our videos, we have a free template that you can download from the link in the description. So this will be the exact same file that we're working from here. So you can follow along from home. It also includes the image that we have here. So if you want to do a like for like recreation of what we're doing here, be sure to download that. Okay, so we're going to create something similar to this table of contents we have here. Now, just note that this is isn't interactive in any way this is just a very simple table of contents but we're just going to show you a few handy shortcuts to create this so down on our second page here you can see we have the blank page that we can work from here so I'm gonna press W on my keyboard to show my guides here and I'm going to grab my type tool and I'm just going to start by clicking and dragging a type box from the top left hand corner of our margin there. We'll just drag this out to a rough size here. And just note that we don't have any kind of character or paragraph style set up for this. So this is quite deliberate. We want to just show you a quick and easy way of doing this without any preset styles. So I'm just going to type out contents here, enter a couple of times, and then I'm just going to make up some sections here. So we'll say introduction, and I'll just add a few sections here, just hitting enter after after each of these. We'll just create three sections for this example and then a conclusion and I'm just going to select this and I'm just going to select a font that we have on our computer here called Rubik. Now do be aware if you don't have this font installed and it is a font that we've installed ourselves your document may flag this up so you can change this to any font really this is just an example here this is a completely made up brand and everything as you can tell here. I'm going to select all of this again and I'm just going to change the color of this to one of our preset colors here change the size of this and make it all caps make it bold and we'll make it 24 point and select all this again and up in our control panel I'm just going to add some paragraph spacing so because we hit enter and not shift and enter that means they are hard line breaks so if I add paragraph spacing you can see it's adding spacing between each line here so that's fine for this I'm just going to make up some page numbers here there are ways of creating adaptive tables of content so that you can actually link the section to a a page and if you're moving the pages around it will automatically update the page number in your table of contents but for this example we're just going to type out some numbers as we're really just trying to show you the formatting options for our introduction I'll start at page 3 and it's a little bit confusing because we've got numbers after each of these sections but I'm just doing a double space and I'll show you why afterwards and I'll just go up in odd numbers here. It doesn't really matter. Like I say, this is just an example. Okay, so we have our numbers set up. Now, I want to align each of these page numbers to the right-hand side of this type box. There's a few different ways of doing this. I can get up my tabs and actually place it in a right-aligned tab, but there's an easy shortcut for that. With my cursor, select the space before the three here. I'm not going right to the left of the three. I'm going one space along. Obviously, we did a double space, between our words and number. And the reason for this is because I want a slight space when I add in a dotted rule line between the word and the number. So we'll get to that in just a second. And to right align it to the right of the text box, there's a very simple shortcut and that is shift and tab. So you can see the three is now aligned to the right of the text box. So if I grab my selection tool, you can see this is perfectly aligned. And the great thing about this is if I change the width of the text box, the three will adapt with this. This is a really helpful shortcut. Now to add the ruled line between the two, if I go back into the text box, if I just double click into here, I'm just going to double click in the middle here and I have my tabbed area selected. So we still have the space on the right hand side and the space on the left hand side. This is just personal preference. I think it looks better with a bit of space between. Otherwise the ruled line is going right to the edge of each and it can look a little bit busy. So what I can do now is simply go up to my control bar here and click our underline option. And this will add a basic ruled line by default. However, if I hold option on a Mac or alt on a PC and click this again, we get our underline options here.
here. So I can actually change this if I go to type, I can change this to a dotted line. So I'll do that in this scenario. We can change the weight of this, stick with one point for this example, and we can change the offset. If I set the offset to zero, that's going to align with the baseline of our text. So that's probably gonna look the best in this scenario. Then I can just click okay. If I just grab my selection tool, you can see the effect we're getting. This is already looking good. Now, a really simple thing we can do from here is if I just double click into here, now we could have this set up as a character style as well, so this, that's another way of doing it, but I'm just going to double click and select this tabbed area again, press Command C, and now all I have to do is click between our section names and the page number and just press Command V to paste this in place, and you can see that's applying the right aligned tab and our dotted line rule as well. So this is just a really quick and easy way of doing this. Do it with the rest of them. Go back to my selection tool again. You can see if I resize this, they're all going to move along with the right hand side. And the last thing I'm going to do is if you see on our first example here, we have this aligning to this same angle that we have going on in the background. A simple way of doing this is if I unlock my background layer here, we'll select our yellow angled box here. I'm just going to hold Option on my Mac or again Alt on a PC and just click and drag this over. That's just going to create a duplicate of this. I'm just going to roughly drag this over and what I'll do now is select my text box as well and it's important that the text box is sitting above this layer. What I can do now is go over to my pathfinder over on the right hand side and I'm going to select the intersect option. So basically what that's going to do if I click it it's essentially going to merge the overlapping areas of each path or each frame there. So we now have this angled line and the rest of it stayed the same. I can always grab my direct select tool if I click off this and I can just grab the two right hand points like so I can always click and drag if I hold shift that will keep it on a horizontal plane and I can move this closer and you can see that's an exact match of the angle we have here so I'll go with something like this and there you have it so like we say there are many different and more in-depth ways of creating tables of contents like this However, this is a very simple way to format the text and hopefully you'll find this useful too. If you do have any questions, let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and subscribe for more weekly content. For more on our full graphic design course, visit graphicdesignerpro.com. See you next time.